Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, publication that really I think is very thoughtful in terms of putting together all our different options for the treatment of CRS uh, with nasal polyps. Um, these guys actually did a really nice job. I wanna highlight this part of it. So this is part of the whole treatment, uh, that's treatment algorithm that's outlined here. And so what they're calling out in this group is for patients who have uh, recurrent nasal polyps, they highlight uh, five different options. Um, and basically, you know, for patients who are, um, who have persistent disease, they're essentially in a loop. But the idea is for pa if they have maximal medical therapy, which is typically steroid irrigations or, um, you know, delivery of steroids via exhalational delivery, um, it calls out biologics, revision surgery, aspirin desensitization for AERD patients, a steroid sinus implant, and short bursts of prednisone, and puts them really all on a uh, equal playing field. It's interesting to me how we, you know, five years ago, we really had this and this and this. We've re we really advanced quite a bit, but there's a lot of discussion about the role of the biologics, and um, this paper actually summarizes it really well. Have you guys seen this publication? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. They did a really nice job, and I think it's uh, that diagram and specifically helps helps guide the options. Yeah, and it's very digestible too. It's not super long or complicated. It's uh, so I really think it's worthwhile. What do you think of the protocol? I mean, does the protocol make sense? It to me, it encaps encapsulates our decision, our problems making the decision. Right? Any of these are equivalent. There's different access. You have your own philosophy, your own learning uh, in your own patients. So. I think it, it's helpful, but you know, Dr. Hahn, who authored the paper, summed it up very well. At the end of the day, you, know, you have a lot of options and you have to go with what you think is best. But I think the good part is we have a lot of options. We have a lot more than even five years ago, like you said. True. The other part of this, too, um, is that th this is a chronic illness, um, and I, we talk a lot about personalized medicine. This is a huge opportunity to engage patients and let them pick what choice they want. Um, and I think that's going to certainly improve patient satisfaction. It's gonna improve compliance in any kind of treatment regimen. But you can give them options. And some people may prefer surgery. Some people would, they can make a, an informed choice um, in a way that I think is beneficial when you're dealing with a quality of life disease mostly.